So Hillary Clinton has emerged from the wilderness um, to talk about the current state of politics in the country. And not only has her ideology not evolved in a positive direction, she's right back to the same old bag of tricks. Here she is on Rachel Maddow. Um, I think this speaks for itself. Uh, Ann Applebaum essentially says, if the 20th century was the story of slow, uneven progress toward liberal democracy, the 21st century so far is the story of the reverse. She says, you know, not only what we're going on, what's going on in the United States is a reversal away from democracy, but we should see it as part of a global problem. She identifies in particular that the authoritarian strongman regimes around the world are all helping each other, including, you know, personally supporting other mm -hmm. corrupt leaders in their corruption and helping them evade sanctions and stuff. And it does feel both global and very hard to fight. It feels almost inexorable. And speaking with Anne Applebaum about that, I found myself sort of in a dark place for a few days. And I wanted to put that to you to find out mm -hmm. um, whether you see that through, through, through a lens darkly as well, or whether you're feeling more optimistic about strategy against it. Well, Rachel, um, I, I am very worried, concerned. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, thinking about exactly what Anne Applebaum and you and others are uh, worried about and trying to point out, uh, because I do think that we are facing uh, a crisis of democracy, a crisis of legitimacy, uh, a crisis that really goes to the heart of what the future of our country and many others around the world will be. So I spend my time trying to figure out um, what we can do about it. And I am uh, not ever going to give up because there's just too much at stake. Uh, but first and foremost, we have to make sure more people besides people like you, me, Ann Applebaum and others uh, who uh, share our concerns, uh, see what we see. Uh, because I think that uh, the role of disinformation, the way that propaganda has been really weaponized uh, and the increasing ability to manipulate people through algorithms and other forms of artificial intelligence will only make this harder uh, to combat. Imagine looking at the current state of the world and your main takeaway is like the disinformation online, the misinformation online. This is the problem and something needs to be done about it. So you look at all the problems we have in the world, and your main takeaway is, censor the internet. You look at climate change, you look at the corruption, not just globally, but in the United States of America. You look at, you know, the fact that the minimum wage isn't a living wage, 30 million Americans don't have health insurance in this country. You look at all these things, and your takeaway is, Oh, the disinformation online is such a problem. Somebody should do something about that. That is such a, you know, she's so in her bubble, her little elite bubble. And by the way, the other portion of this that is astonishing is uh, what Rachel Maddow saying at the beginning about, oh, the strong men are now supporting other strong men and they're evading sanctions. And, you know, we're, we're heading towards a, a less like democratic era. What they don't tell you is that the United States militarily supports 73% of the world's dictatorships. So all this faux concern about like, oh, the strong men, the age, the er an era of authoritarianism has been ushered in. It's like, yeah, and we facilitated it. Now, that, that's, that's actually not fair because there's many authoritarians that are not, you know, U.S. backed. But we're certainly not the antidote to it. I mean, for Christ's sakes, uh, what, our top allies, Saudi Arabia and Israel? Israel's like, you know, a, a theocratic uh, apartheid state. And you have Saudi Arabia, which is an authoritarian theocracy. And they're going to, you know, cry about, oh, the rise of authoritarianism is so bad. What does that even mean? What they mean is the rise of the authoritarians who aren't our allies is bad. I mean, there's no, there's no objective standards here. You know what I mean? There's no looking at this and analyzing it in a fair, open-minded way. It's all biased towards U.S. empire. So, I mean, it's really something. They're talking about the downfall of, you know, liberal democratic societies, and Hillary's main takeaway is like, 
You know, the disinformation is really the problem here. Really? Really? The material conditions aren't the problem? The rampant imperialism isn't the problem? The destruction of our climate and the environment isn't the problem? That's not the main thing that comes to your mind. The main thing that comes to your mind is somebody should take action on what's happening online. Now, don't get it twisted. There is a lot of misinformation and disinformation online and all these problems, but whatever sort of solutions you're proposing better not create a bigger problem than what the problem is. And of course, that's what these things, whatever she's in favor of, would do. And any sort of ministry of truth or regulation of the internet where you slap down things that are just, we think is untrue. Well, you know what, Hillary Clinton? You were somebody who pushed conspiracy theories that were untrue. Russiagate, for example. You were dead wrong about all that shit. Should you be banned? You know, she voted for the Iraq war. Bought right into all the propaganda, hook, line, and sinker. Should all the people who push that stuff be banned? And that's the problem, is because if you do have some sort of regulatory body, they wouldn't have banned the people who were pushing the lies on Iraq. They would have banned the people who were standing up to the lies. So, but anyway, I digress. You guys have heard me do that rant a thousand times, but... She's back, and she sounds worse than ever. By the way, she also, uh, there was a headline about how she said, people don't understand Biden's extraordinary accomplishments. Look, I'm fair. I'll give credit where it's due. The pulling out of Afghanistan, great. I, gave, I was one of the only people to give him credit and defend him at the time when everybody was shitting on him universally. The executive order to raise federal employees and federal contractors minimum wage to $15 an hour, great. I give him credit for that as well. I give him credit, even the $1,400 checks. He said $2,000, so he lied, but I'll give him credit for giving $1,400 checks. There, there's your credit. But don't pretend like it's extraordinary success, extraordinary accomplishments. Because he said $15 minimum wage federally, he didn't get it. He said public option, he didn't get it. They said uh, $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. We're down to l under $2 trillion, and it looks like they might even not get that. So, spare me. Spare me. FDR and LBJ are rolling over in their graves, and you know it. But in this new era of milquetoast neoliberalism, they try to spin everything as a win, even if it's we're basically acting like Republicans.